Hello everyone, I am Pratap here. We are at part 1 of lesson 12, the purpose of the time frames. And this lesson is having dependency on the earlier lessons. In case, if you are accessing this video directly without attending the earlier lessons, I request you go to the Neostock YouTube home page. This is Neostock YouTube home page. Click on this home and then scroll down to the playlist Supply Demand Zone Price Action Course. So this is the playlist. So please click on this playlist. So you get access to all the earlier lessons and also all the upcoming lessons also will be placed in this playlist. So please complete all the lessons starting from lesson 1.1 .1 until the most recent lesson. I will also provide the link to this the link to this playlist in this YouTube video description. So from there also you can access the link and directly get into this playlist. Now let us get into our lesson 12. The purpose of the time frames. Previous lesson we discussed about the different different time frames and also we have practiced by drawing demand and supply zones at different time frames. So the question that should come in your mind is, what is the purpose of these time frames? So the purpose of the time frame is to identify the income trade types. So what are these income trade types? They can be long term income trades or it can be medium term income trades or it can be short term income trades. Long term income trades means for a long duration, maybe several months or several years. And medium term income trades, that could be few weeks to few months. And short term income trades, that could be few hours to few days. This is the way you can distinguish. Let us look into the long term income trades. In long-term income trades, we have different types of income trades. One is yearly income trade. In short form, we can call it as YIT, yearly income trade. And trades holds for few years is called yearly income trade. And the next one is a quarterly income trade. In short, you can call it as a QIT, quarterly income trade. And in this income trade, your trades can hold for few quarters. And the next one is medium term income trades. Under medium term income trades, we have few subtypes. One is a monthly income trade. We also call it as a MIT, monthly income trade. The trades holds for few months. That means if you place an order today, probably you will hold for few months until it, until it reaches your target. And weekly income trade, in short we call it as a WIT. So these are the trades that can hold for few weeks. That means you will take a trade today and you will hold it for few weeks until it reaches its target. And third type is short term income trades. Under short term income trades, again you have a couple of types. One is daily income trade. In short, we call it as a DIT. And these are the trades you hold for few days. That means you buy, you place your order today and then you will exit after few days after reaching its target. And the next one is hourly income trades. In short, we call it as a HIT, hourly income trade. These are the trades holds for few hours. So you buy the stock and after few hours, you will be selling that after reaching its target. And these hourly income trades are also called day trading. Some people also call hourly income trade as a day trading. So that means within the same day, you take an entry and within the same day, you will exit from the trade. So these are the three main types, long term income trades, medium term income trades and short term income trades. These long term income trades are mainly used for investment purpose. Mostly you take cash trades, you buy in cash only. 
so when you buy in cash it is not possible to go for short trades you can only go for long trades in a derivatives market we have two types long trades and short trades so when you go for investment mostly it is going for buying only you can't sell first and then you can buy in long term and next one is medium term they are also called as a swing trading and swing trading you can use it for investment purpose as well as the trading purpose both is possible investment purpose means cash trades you buy in cash mostly there are long trades only you buy and then after getting profit you will sell the other way is not possible in cash trading but if you go for derivative trading it is possible you can buy and sell or you can sell first and later you can buy generally we call them as a long trades and short trades okay both are possible but in uh, medium term income trades supported by both cash trades as well as derivative trades and third one is short term income trades this is for short term trading most of the times you take them in uh, you will trade in derivatives market either in futures or options because you are holding for short term mostly you look for both long opportunities as well as short opportunities there is nothing wrong in taking cash also in short term trading but only thing is when you go for the cash you will only go for buy first and then you sell you cannot do the reverse that is sell first and then you buy we call it as a long and a short okay these are the different types of income trades is supported and how we will make use of these income trades that we will be discussing in the later chapters and mainly in our course we will be focusing on the monthly income trade weekly income trade daily income trade and hourly income trade these four types you will be focusing and you will be able to understand what is quarterly income trade and what is yearly income trade soon after you understand these four types monthly weekly daily and hourly income trades now let us correlate these time frames and income trades we use three time frames for defining any of those income trades you have seen in the previous slide we should use a minimum of three time frames and one is called lower time frame in short we call it as a ltf these are the technical terms please remember and another one is intermediate time frame in short we call it as itf and third one is higher time frame in short we call it as htf all these three are technical terms lower time frame intermediate time frame and higher time frame please remember and please remember these technical terms along with its short names that is ltf itf and htf why i am saying why you should remember along with the short names the reason is there is also general english statement lower time frame and higher time frame generally when i say lower time frame you may get a doubt is it a general english term lower time frame or is it the technical term lower time frame similarly higher time time frame is also having we have this technical term and also the general english statement higher time frame intermediate time frame which we have only this technical name there is no general english statement we use what is the difference between general english word higher time frame lower time frame and the technical terms higher time frame and lower time frame you may get this doubt when i say the general english word higher time frame from the current time frame anything above say, say for example currently i am referring daily anything above daily what is anything above daily weekly monthly quarterly half yearly yearly all these are all called as higher time frames that is general english word what about general english word lower time frame when i say daily is the current time frame anything below daily is the lower time frame that is 125 minutes 75 minutes or 2 hourly or 1 hourly or 15 minutes 
five minutes or one minute all these are all under daily so anything below daily so when i am referring daily is my current time frame suppose if i say one hour is my current time frame anything below one hour is lower time frame and anything above one hour is higher time frame these are all the general english word then what is this technical term how it is different with the general english word so please concentrate see if the lower time frame when i say my lower time frame is daily one time frame above is called intermediate time frame what is one time frame above daily that is weekly so weekly is itf intermediate time frame itf and one more time frame higher is called higher time frame that is htf i'm using the short words whenever i use short words they are always technical terms they are not general english words please remember so that means htf means two time frames above my current time frame my current time frame is daily two time frames above is monthly and one time frame above is itf intermediate time frame itf one time frame above my current time frame and my current time frame is always called as a lower time frame ltf that means if ltf is a daily one time frame above ltf time frame is itf time frame that means weekly is the itf time frame similarly two time frames above the daily because the daily is my lower time frame ltf so two time frames above daily is monthly so that monthly is called higher time frame htf so these are the technical terms so when i say the technical term htf itf ltf you should understand the time frames like this you will get more and more better clarity in the coming lessons this is only the starting lesson you need not worry in case if there is any confusion but you will be learning more in detail in the on all the coming sessions with clear examples okay what is the purpose of this lower time frame ltf intermediate time frame itf and higher time frame htf what is the purpose that is what you should understand when you understand their purpose and how to use this ltf itf htf then you will be in a position to trade that means after understanding all these three time frames along with the income trade types so for income trade types i have just given you the names so within that income tra trade type what is htf time frame what is iptf time frame what is ltf time frame all these things you will understand in the upcoming lessons for in this lesson our primary focus is to understand what is ltf that is lower time frame or what is itf that is intermediate time frame and what is htf that is a higher time frame so let us focus on that so as i already told you these time frame levels should be immediate next levels for example if ltf is daily itf is weekly and htf is monthly so daily is ltf one time frame higher is weekly and one more time frame higher that is monthly so daily is called ltf time frame weekly is called itf time frame and monthly is called htf time frame we already discussed this example and one more example also i have given for bringing better clarity say for example currently you are saying 75 minutes is my current time frame that is your ltf time frame and one time frame above is called itf that is a daily is itf and one more time frame higher that is weekly that is called a htf time frame so always what is a ltf that plays the major role to understand what is itf time frame and what is htf time frame so please focus on this point what is a ltf time frame that is lower time frame what is ltf that is lower time frame if you are able to define what is ltf time frame then based on that you will be in a position to identify what is itf time frame and what is htf time frame always remember if from your current time frame one time frame higher is 
ITF time frame and one more time frame higher is called HTF time frame. For different income trades, what is LTF, what is ITF, what is HTF, you will be able to see in the upcoming lessons. In this lesson, our primary focus is understanding what is LTF, what is ITF and what is HTF. So let us start understanding each of these things in detail. So the first one is a lower time frame, LTF. Remember, we are not talking about general English words, what is lower time frame or higher time frame. Now we are discussing about the technical names, what is LTF and what is ITF and what is HTF. So the first one is lower time frame, LTF. LTF should be used for identifying the set you already learned in the phase one uh, training program, probably in lesson three or lesson four or lesson five, one of these lessons, uh, I have explained uh, what is SET set. S indicates uh, stop loss, E indicates entry and T indicates target. So by this time, all of you know what is this set because we have practiced enough on this. So LTF should be used for identifying stop loss, entry and target. How you identify stop loss, entry and target? Only if you are able to identify demand zone and supply zone, then only you will be able to identify what is entry, what is stop loss and what is target, right? So that means LTF time frame should be used for identifying demand zone and supply zone that we want to use for our trading purpose. So that is what I specified here. In this time frame, we identify demand zone and supply zone to find what is your entry, what is your stop loss and what is your target. So accordingly, you will be pl planning your trade. So for your trade point of view, remember, I'm saying for the trade point of view, I'm stressing on this word, where you will understand in the next uh, two types. For your trade point of view, what is the demand zone you are identifying? What is the supply zone you are identifying? They are lower time frame zones. That is LTF zones. LTF zones should be used for the trading purpose for identifying your entry, your stop loss and your target. That means are we going to identify demand zone and supply zone? even in ITF time frame, even in HTF time frame. Yes, you are going to identify, but their purpose is something different. Their purpose is not for trading point of view. Their purpose is something else that you will understand very soon in this lesson. Now, I hope I, I brought the better clarity now. So in LTF time frame, demand zone, supply zone, you are identifying mainly for your trading point of view for identifying your stop loss, entry and target. Okay. And one more point, LTF is also called as entry time frame. Some people are call lower time frame, that is LTF. Some people also call entry time frame, ETF. In short, we can say. But ETF is having another meaning in the stock market. That is exchange traded fund. So because we want to, mostly people may get confusion. That's why let us avoid short term for entry time frame. So please remember, lower time frame is also called as entry time frame. Why we are calling entry time frame? Because in this time frame, we will take our entry for buying and selling point of view. So this is about LTF. There is not, nothing much to learn for, about this LTF. It's very simple. And the next one is intermediate time frame, ITF. So what is ITF? ITF should be used for identifying the trend of the income trade. Please observe my English words carefully. ITF should be used for identifying, I am stressing on the word, identifying. Identifying what? The trend. Why you are identifying the trend? For this entire trade point of view, whatever the income trade you have chosen, 
in that income trade what is the trend you want to identify or what is the trend you want to understand that you have to look into the intermediate time frame but not lower time frame please remember this point trend should be used always one level above your entry level if your entry level is a daily you have to look for your trend in weekly not in the daily daily is only for entry stop loss and target but your trend should be identified one time frame higher if daily is your entry one time frame higher is weekly so in the weekly you have to check for the trend if weekly trend is up trend so you can say okay because the trend is up it is a bullish so we can look for buying opportunities suppose if the weekly trend is a down trend what you do because the trend is bearish you look for short opportunities in which time frame one time frame below the trend time frame trend time frame is itf time frame one time frame below is your ltf so this is the way you have to understand many beginners beginning level you may think whichever the time frame you are taking entry you may look for trend in the same time frame that is wrong always you have to look for one time frame higher if that higher time frame supports up trend look for buy opportunities if the i sorry if the intermediate time frame not higher time frame sorry for my mistake if the intermediate time frame is supporting up trend then look for the long opportunities if the intermediate time frame is supporting down trend look for the sell opportunities that is short opportunities so this is the way you should understand so that's why i'm saying itf should be used for identifying the trend i'm stressing the word identifying the trend why you will understand in the next slide when we discuss about htf htf also we look for trend but but its purpose is different so i want to bring that clarity that's why i'm stressing on the word identifying the trend itf should be used for identifying the trend okay what for you are identifying for your income trade purpose your whatever the income trade you are using that income trade what kind of trend it is having if you want to buy you always look for up trend the stocks having up trend if you are looking for sell opportunities always you look for the stocks that is having down trend because you already learned a trend is our friend until the end when there is a bend we discussed about this statement in detail in the during the first phase of our training program that's why our trend is very very important in case if you did not attend any of the lessons related to the trend please complete those lessons your entire trading will be based on the trend only if you want to get good profits in the stock market we have to understand the trend in a better way those who understands the trend in a better way they always get good profits in the stock market okay that's why always look for itf time frame for identifying the trend and what else itf is supporting itf should also be used for finding the price direction price direction also plays major role for the selection of your trading decision what is your trading decision whether i want to go for buy or i want to go for sell that means whether i want to go for long or i want to go for short for this trading decisions point of view price direction plays the major role what is price direction it is very simple is prices are traveling moving from demand zone to supply zone or prices are moving from supply zone to demand zone that's it very simple based on this price direction we will be taking our decision so that means 
your intermediate time frame that is itf is used for finding the trend also for finding the price direction got it so this is about intermediate time frame and now that means prices are uh, traveling between it of demand zone and it of supply zone because sometimes again you may get a doubt you may think is it ltf direction or uh, something else so when i say intermediate time frame the price movement is between uh, intermediate time frame demand zone to intermediate time frame supply zone or intermediate time frame supply zone to intermediate time frame demand zone how prices are moving that is what you should understand when i talk about itf when i suppose if i talk about htf you need to look into htf demand zone and htf supply zone but this slide is talking about itf time frame that's why the price direction in itf is between itf demand zone and supply zone hope you got it clear and the third one and this is the most important one why it is most important one you will understand very soon htf should be used for identifying buyer's location and seller's location the location is it a buyer's location or is it a seller's location what is buyer's location what is seller's location that is your ltf zone where you want to take your trade that zone is there in the buyer's location or that zone is there in the seller's location suppose your demand zone is there in the buyer's location is obviously it is a good demand zone suppose if your demand zone is there in the seller's location is it a good demand zone in the seller's location sellers will be dominating so when sellers are dominating buying a stock in the seller's location is it a good idea or is it a bad idea that's why location plays the major role every demand zone is not a good zone the demand zone which is there in the buyer's location is a good zone exactly the same way the supply zone which is there in the seller's location is a good zone compare it to compare it to the supply zone which is there in the buyer's location so how do you identify this location buyer's location and seller's location for that htf time frame will be used always remember location plays a very important role for example you want to travel when you want to travel you have selected few sightseeing locations at different cities in one of the location the situation is not good maybe there are heavy rains and floods are there then do you prefer to visit that location that is a dangerous situation when floods are there there when there are heavy rains if you want to visit for sightseeing it is obviously a wrong choice what kind of location you want to select the location that is pleasant very calm there you want to go and spend some of your time then your holiday trip is going to be successful exactly the same way the trade you are going to take you want it to be successful or you want it to be failed always we look for successful trades then only we get profits that is the reason why when you are finding a demand zone is it in the good location or is it in a bad location you are trying to identify for that your higher time frame is going to helpful to you how it is going to helpful to you you will see very soon after few minutes location is also called as a curve another technical name for the location is a curve some people refer with the name curve some other people will refer with the name location always remember location or curve both are same 
HDF should be used for finding the price direction. HDF is used for finding the location. Apart from that, HDF is also used for finding the price direction. How you will identify whether the prices are moving between HDF demand zone to HDF supply zone or HDF supply zone to HDF demand zone? That is the way you will identify because price direction is also plays important role for identifying your buying decisions and selling decisions. We have already seen the same point for ITF time frame. Exactly the same way. You, can, you should also check in the HTF also. And HTF should also be used for finding the trend. Previously we discussed for identifying the trend we use ITF. But here HDF we are using not for identification of the trend of that particular income trade. A trend of any income trade is dependent on ITF time frame. But why we are identifying trend in HDF also? For the confirmation point of view. What is the confirmation? Mainly to check whether it is a bullish trade setup or it is bearish trade setup. And these setups you will understand by end of this uh, phase 2 training program. So to confirm it is a bullish setup or to confirm it is a bearish setup, for that confirmation you are using HTF time frame for finding the trend. But the actual trend of that particular income trade is dependent on the ITF time frame. Always ITF tells you what is the trend of that particular income trade. There is no doubt in that. Apart from that, we are also using HTF time frame for finding the trend. But here the reason is for confirming the setup is a bullish setup or the confirming the setup is bearish setup. For time being, this is a reference point. Once we get into those bullish setups and bearish setups, then you will be able to understand in a better way why we are using HTF time frame for the confirmation point of view. Okay, so that means the third point we are going to see after some time. But what is our primary focus? Our primary focus is identifying whether that particular area is a buyer's location or seller's location. So how to identify? For that there is a procedure, a simple procedure. Let us learn that procedure for identifying buyer's location and seller's location. So how to identify the curve? Curve means buyer's location and seller's location. You have to draw a vertical line between distal lines of the HTF demand zone and HTF supply zone. You have to draw a straight line. That straight line is called range. The range between the demand zone. What kind of range? Distal line to distal line range. You can also identify proximal line to proximal line range also. By drawing a straight line between two proximal lines of that is demand zone, between demand zone and supply zone. But here we are drawing the straight line between distal line of the demand zone and the distal line of the supply zone. So that means this range is a D to D range. D to D means distal line to distal line range. D to D range. Okay. Once we once we once we find the range, what is the advantage? Now divide the range into three equal parts. Divide this range into three equal parts. The part closest to HTF demand zone is called buyer's location. That means that is the area more buyers will be there. It is also called as low on the curve, L-O-C, short name. LOC. You have to remember this technical name. 
low on the curve means buyer's location whether you say buyer's location or whether you say low on the curve both are same and the part that is closest to hdf supply zone is called seller's location and it is called as high on the curve in short name hoc high on the curve that means seller's location or high on the curve both are same what does it mean that is the area where more sellers will be there in buyer's location more buyers will be there similarly in seller's location more sellers will be there what is important for us our demand zone is there in the buyer's location or seller's location when you want to go for buy similarly your supply zone is there in the buyer's location or seller's location when you want to go for sell so that is very important that you can identify you by using this technique and in between buyer's location and seller's location there is also one more part is left out that is the middle part that middle part is called equilibrium in short name eqb what is the meaning of this equilibrium it is in between buyer's location and seller's location that means equilibrium is having the ability which is in favor to buyers as well as the sellers but depending on the price direction that is very very important you will get better clarity on this point in the next session that is practical session that's why price direction plays the most important role that confirms price direction confirms the equilibrium at present is it favorable to the buyers or is it favorable to the sellers so these are the some important parts for identifying i mean some important points for identifying the buyer's location and seller's location and also the technical names we have given for each of these locations let us look into a chart to understand in a better way so here we have a hdf demand zone and hdf supply zone let us assume these demand zones are hdf demand zones and hdf supply zones now at present we are, i am not talking about itf demand zone or itf supply zone or i am not talking about ltf demand zone and ltf supply zone all these things we will see in detail in the practical session now we have to understand how to identify the location or how to mark the location that is the curve okay what is the rule between the distal line of the demand zone and distal line of the supply zone we need to draw a straight line that is the d to d range distal line to distal line range so what is the distal line for demand zone zone low what is the distal line for supply zone zone high so we have drawn the distal lines so what is the rule here draw a straight line between these two lines that is the range so this straight line is the range what kind of range it is it is a d to d range distal line to distal line range okay what is the next step divide this entire range into three equal parts so we have divided into three equal parts it is very simple the difference of the demand zone distal line and the supply zone distal line that means from supply zone distal line you subtract the demand zone distal line whatever the value you get that is the range d to d range now divide the range in by with three you get three equal parts now each of the part you can mark a horizontal line okay the one that is closest to the demand zone this is the one so we have marked with green color so this area is called buyer's location 
This entire area is buyer's location. This buyer's location mostly is favorable to buying purpose. If our LTF demand zone is there within this location, it is much favorable for taking a trade. What kind of trade? Buying trade or a long trade. And what is the technical name for this location? This buyer's location, low on the curve. The short name is LOC, low on the curve. And what about the location that is close to the supply zone, HTF supply zone? That is called seller's location. See, I have drawn a red color let, uh, line, vertical line. So this entire area is favorable to the sellers. That means more sellers will be there in this area. When more sellers are there, that is favorable to selling decision. It is not good for buying decisions. That is what the meaning. And what is the technical name? High on the curve. Short name HOC. Okay, in between HOC and LOC, we have one more area that is called the blue color line, whatever I have drawn, that area is called equilibrium, short name EQB. This area is favorable to both buyers and sellers, provide how prices are moving. Are the, are the prices are moving from demand zone to supply zone or supply zone to demand zone? Which supply zone? HTF supply zone to HTF demand zone or HTF demand zone to HTF supply zone. That is what you have to see. See, whenever we discuss about HTF, always you have to look in the HTF demand zone and HTF supply zone. You should not bring the other time frames. So if the prices are moving from HTF supply zone to HTF demand zone, that means move, prices are going down. In that situation, equilibrium area is favorable to short rates. That is the selling decisions. Suppose if the prices are moving from HTF demand zone to HTF supply zone. That means prices are going up. In that situation, equilibrium is favorable to buying decisions. That is long trades. That's why price direction plays a very important role. It is a confirmation for our buying decisions and selling decisions. Price direction is a confirmation for our buying decisions and selling decisions. Exactly the same way, HTF trend also will be the confirmation for buying and selling decisions that you will see later. I'm not bringing that point at this point of time. I have given as a reference in this, in this lesson, but later we will look into that. Our primary focus is finding the location and understanding the price direction. These two are very important at this point of time. And all these points we will mix and then we will practice on the charts. The second part of this lesson is a practical session. Whatever the concepts you land, that everything we will mix and we will see on the charts so that you understand in a better way. But before that, you should understand each and every point I have explained in detail. Now look into this. Suppose the price is, the current price is at this area where it is in equilibrium. Now tell me, is it Favorable to buying decision or selling decision at this point of time. Suppose at this point of time, in your lower time frame, you identified a zone here. Both demand zone and supply zone. So which one you prefer? You prefer it for buying or selling? So as per the rule, equilibrium is favorable, favorable to both buyers and sellers. When it is favorable to both buyers and sellers, do we need to buy or do we need to sell? What decision you have to take? There is a confusion, right? So to solve this problem, 
I have introduced one more parameter called price direction. Now, how prices are traveling? Prices are traveling from HTF supply zone to HTF demand zone. Prices are going down now. They are moving towards the HTF demand zone. When prices are going down in equilibrium, which even though it is favorable to both buyers and sellers, which decision you will take? You will take only a sell decision, not the buy decision. You want to go for short trades. Short trades based on the price direction because currently the price direction is towards the down. So that is the way you have to understand. Now look into this candle. Now prices moved down, entered into the HTF demand zone and now they changed the price direction towards the up. From HTF demand zone, now prices, because HTF demand zone, all the pending orders pushing the price down. Sorry, pushing the price up. Because they are pushing the prices up, now the price direction is changed. Now, where are the prices in the equilibrium area? We, are, we have seen or we have already land. Equilibrium is favorable to both buyers and sellers. But at, uh, here we have a new demand zone and supply zones in this area. Now which decision you take? You want to go for buy or you want to go for sell? Previously we have taken a sell decision. Now, now the price direction is changed. Now in HDF demand zone to HDF supply zone prices are moving. Because prices are moving up in the equilibrium, we want to take a buy decision instead of sell decision. Earlier, prices were moving down, we took a sell decision. Now prices are moving up, we have taken a, we are taking a buy decision. So that is the way the price direction plays the most important role for the confirmation of your trade. We have two zones, both demand zone and supply zone, both are there in the equilibrium. But based on the HTF price direction, you are taken, you have taken a decision whether to go for buy or to go for short, depending on HTF price direction. Hope you got clarity how we will make use of the price direction. See now what happened? Again, prices are moving up. Now they entered into the supply zone. The moment the prices entered into the supply zone, what happened? The HTF supply zone, higher time frame supply zone, the pending orders again push the prices down. Now price direction is changed. Now again prices entered into the equilibrium. What kind of decision you take here? You take a sell decision. Previously when prices entered into the HTF supply zone, what kind of decision we take? In HTF supply zone, we take a sell decision because this is the area sellers will be there. Sellers area you should not buy. So definitely we take a sell decision. Definitely our decision is supported. Now prices went down. Now again if you want to buy something because you find some demand zone and supply zones at lower time frame inside this equilibrium. Because now the price direction is changed towards the down, now you take only a sell decision in the equilibrium instead of buy decision based on the confirmation of the price direction. So this is the way we need to understand how to make use of different time frames for each income trade type. For each income trade type, what time frames are supported, that we will see in the next uh, upcoming sessions. But time being, you have to understand, ITF is identified for finding the trend. LTF is used for finding the buying zones or selling zones, that is your set, stop loss, entry and target. And a higher time frame HTF is used for finding the location. The location is a buyer's location or seller's location or in between. 
that is uh, equilibrium. So we have identified three technical terms, low on the curve, high on the curve and equilibrium. Apart from that, we also discussed about price direction. Price direction always helps the confirmation of that particular trade should be accepted or rejected depending on the HTF price direction. To add even more perfection, ITF direction also should be considered. But I don't want to make your understanding more complex at this stage. Let us learn these concepts in step by step. There is no hurry at all. First, let us focus from the HTF point of view. Then slowly we will understand the issues and we will also look into ITF price direction also. First, let us try to understand the concepts. After that, we will try to bring perfection to our trades. So it is a two-step process for learning in a better way. So this is about uh, part 1 of lesson uh, 12. In part 2 of lesson 12 is a practical session. There whatever the concepts you land in this lesson, in uh, live charts, we will practice. That way we understand uh, all these concepts in a much better way. But before we get into the practicals, so you should understand all these concepts and you also try to practice something, whatever you understand, based on that you try to practice. And please remember, please draw all these vertical lines and horizontal lines for identifying the curves manually. Do not use any tools. Trading view, there is a tool is available. Based on Fibonacci retracement, we can configure and we can draw. But I don't want you people to use those tools at this point of time. By end of the phase of the second phase of the training program, I will give you explanation about those tools, how to use those tools. Why I want you to do manually is that way only you understand in a perfect way. That way any troubles are there, you will be able to understand the issues. The best way, perfect way to learn any fundamental concepts are doing the work manually as much as possible without having dependency on the other tools. Once you get comfort on the subject, then in the live practicals or I mean in the live trading sessions to reduce your time, you will make use of the tools. But please uh, try to practice uh, whatever the points I told, especially identifying the curve and identifying the buyer's location, seller's location in different, different time frames. You can practice in uh, uh, three exercises I will give you before I get into the practicals. So take a monthly time frame. There you divide into three parts. Again, uh, take another stock. Take weekly time frame. Again, divide into three parts. Again, take one more uh, time frame that is daily time frame. Assume that is the higher time frame. Again, divide into three parts. That way you practice in different time frames so that you get better understanding about these concepts. You have to practice these three time frames, minimum these three time frames. Daily time frame, weekly time frame, and monthly time frame. So three exercises I'm giving to you. So probably I'll be giving you one or two days time, maximum one or two days time before I uh, get into the practical uh, session. So practice, while practicing you may find some difficulties or you may find some new issues also that is possible, then immediately put your question in the comment section of this video. So I will try to clarify your answers. Or if more explanation is required, I will try to clarify with examples in the next upcoming practical video. That's why I'm giving you a one or two days time to practice and provide your feedback in case if you are facing any difficulty. So I want everybody should do this exercise. So thank you for attending this session. Let us all meet again in the practical session. Thank you.